Welcome to the Healthy Perspective Podcast with your host, chiropractor, entrepreneur, mentor, and author, Dr. Chris Bowman. He'll break down and extract the secret sauce behind his own success and the success of some of the top leaders in every category and from around the world. Get ready for your weekly mental adjustment because shift is going to happen. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Healthy Perspective podcast. Today, we have Mr. Matt Roski. He founded Cultivate Elevate to bring back information that has been suppressed and caused our society to become sicker and weaker. Our mission is to educate and empower individuals to rise above the state of fear because there are always solutions. Um, I stumbled upon uh, Matt's podcast um, when I searched electroculture. Literally, someone just posted it in one of the homesteading groups. Look up electroculture. It'll change your life. And I'm like, I never heard of that. Sounds interesting. Looked it up. And Matt was one of the first people that came up. And I have been deep down the rabbit hole the past couple of months. I got all my copper coming in the mail. I know I probably should have bought that cash. but um, And and so it, it's going to be... A, an electrifying, no pun intended, uh, podcast, just talking about homesteading and, and really what we can do to become a stronger, healthier, more aware society. Um, so Matt, thank you so much for joining us. Happy to be here. So um, why don't you give us a little background on on how you kind of, you know, I, I shared, I, I saw a post on it and I dug down the rabbit hole. What kind of got you, you know, interested in doing more research and, you know, growing your own food, nutrient density and, and ways to grow it that are uh, not commercial? Well, when I started looking into the work of Victor Schauberger and all of his work with vortexes and water and copper and all of these things and all of the information in which he basically discovered, um, it started really dawning on me that our system of how we're growing our food is very backwards, right? Like we take pesticides, which are poisons, you know, and we spray them on the food and then we eat that food. And then, you know, if you think about it, you're eating poison, right? It's pretty much what's happening. The poison's going on the plant and then you're consuming that back into your body. So that, that messes up our health, right? That, that's why I'm big in the organic way, because that's what the way we need to do it without these pesticides, chemicals, fertilizers, and all those things. But when I got into Victor Schauberger's work, he studied a lot of different people all over the different worlds, different part of the world. And he started to notice that people, when they were using copper in the soil, they got these crazy yields. It just went through the roof, 60 to 70 to 80% increases. And when he noticed that people were using iron at that time in the soil, because that's the traditional tool, it's always made out of iron. You have the iron plows and all these things. He noticed that those people suffered from, um, you know, clumpy clay that was all bunched up that, that, that needed a lot more water. And he started to notice that the life force of that soil was pretty much diminishing. It was becoming all clumpy and he couldn't work with it. So he proposed at that time to the, I believe it was the uh, Bulgarian government to say, let's do some copper tools and let's make this all happen. I'll make them all. We'll give them to all the farmers. It'll yield so much food. And they actually went out of their way to basically do a broadcast on the radio, on the newspaper and everything else going against his ideas because the fact that he would basically yield them so much food, the farmers, that is, that they would lose money. That's basically what their whole you know, proposal basically that went out there. So when Victor Schauberger said this, he's like, but I'm trying to help you guys. You know, I've been studying all this. I've been studying the nature I've been studying these things. And when I learned all that, I thought this needs to become, you know, this needs to come out and be out in the general public because if copper can do that much in just such a short amount of time and amplify the energy and increase yields, help you know get rid of pests, help get rid of slugs, help get rid of fertilizers, chemicals, all those things, then why aren't we doing this? And it's all because it's been forgotten and, and or this information has been suppressed by chemical companies who are trying to sell us the poison, right? Every time you go into a hardware store, it's all pretty much one company. You got Monsanto on this side with chemicals, and you got DuPont on this side selling you plastic, you know? So if it's not one or the other, you're pretty much, you know, trying to purchase from those. And if we want to be healthy and take care of our beautiful terrain and our temple and our body and everything else, then we have to put high quality things into it. And we are, the cool thing about copper is we are an electrical being, mm -hmm. right? So copper can basically helps in increase conductivity or electricity. What are we? One big conductor. You know, so you see where these things start to go hand in hand versus when we're putting all this iron in the soil, we're deadening the soil and then it's not conducting. It doesn't have that life. 
and then plants start to fall apart. And I've done a bunch of videos showing how plants come back to life, like just a stick and you wrap it with copper and put it in the soil. And then it starts sprouting leaves, even if it's just a branch, you know, because that's the power is once we bring back that life force, these beautiful things start happening. And when I learned all this, I thought everybody needs to know this, you know, everybody needs to see this. And, you know, my whole basically mission was to put this out there so that people can research into it and learn about these, these, these techniques that they used to do all over the world, but just have been forgotten because as people unfortunately passed away, the information was lost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I told my, my mom about this and she started like thinking about it a little bit. She's been a gardener ever since I've been little. And she said, uh, it was a, like, they call it like a wives tale, whatever you put a shiny, uh, penny in yep. the, like your tulip or, you know, something like that. And it wouldn't droop. And she, so when I said copper, she's like, Oh, pennies were copper. Like that makes sense. Or even thinking about um, the milkman would put a silver dollar in the bottom of the milk jug because it's silver, like help, you know, all these, like you said, conductors and properties of the noble metals are, we just kind of see it as a, an exchange. Uh, you know what I mean? Like I give you gold and you give, you know, that, uh, but it's much, much more than that. And when you talk about a conductor, the search for the ultimate conductor, I think is, is water, right? There's nothing really that com- conducts electricity better than water. And when you start to look at these poisons that they're spraying, not only is it going on our plants, but this glyphosate and, and whatnot is all going into the water. And then most recently, you look at these train derailments. I don't know if we're going to get banned for talking about this, but you know, the stuff that's going in the soil in Ohio and in, in Oregon, I think in Nebraska, I think there's been like three or four of them, all of these leading to major water aquifers, or underwater waterways. I mean, it kind of makes sense that if, if they want to poison humans, if they want to take away life, destroy the metals, you know, destroy the soil and pollute the water. How do we start to, I don't know, rearrange the stuff that we're doing on, on our farms? What, what sort of things should we be aware of so that way we can, you know, at least be feeding our plants and ourselves, you know, and on our little plots of land, you know, the, the purest, most nutrient dense foods and, and liquids possible? So there's three things that come to mind. First, a person can build electroculture antennas, which are very easy, yeah. just a piece of wood with copper wrapped around it, and you're placing antennas all over your, your land, and that will help amplify the energy. That's a very simple thing to do. And the taller you build them, the more energy you will harvest, right? Six feet tall is usually about, that will cover about 225 square feet. So that's mm-hmm. a good spot. The other idea is that they can put basalt or volcanic clay into all onto their soil, Reason being is because that has a lot of quartz in it. That Mm. quartz will cause a piezoelectric effect as it's being compressed onto the earth and obviously the magnetism of the earth. So then that can enhance yields and help rebalance the soil, right? Because the biggest thing with like this whole, we throw minerals in the soil thing, we're not looking at it in a full spectrum. I can't just throw one vitamin on the soil and fix something, right? Just like my health, I can't just take vitamin C and it'll fix everything. There's always usually you know, you need the other parts of, for example, food to heal the body. So that would be the second one. And then the third one is you can look into this and this is really cool, but it's Dan Carlson's work and Dorothy Redelick's work of sound, right? You can get actually little speakers and play bird sounds uh, around your area, around your backyard. And those bird sounds will help open up the stomatas of the plant so that the plants will begin to absorb more minerals and actually function better. This is why they spray DDT. You know, DDT is good for me and all over, all, over the, all over the country at one time because it decimated a lot of the bird population. Those birds, when they come out or the rooster comes out at 4 a.m. and it does his call, that call opens up the plants so that they start to absorb all the sun and get all these nutrients going into them. And Dan Carlson and Dorothy Redelak showed that if you play beautiful music to your plants, they will grow three times faster. And he showed this, they, they both showed this with classical music and different types of stringed instruments as well. And then when they played, for example, rock music, which is destructive music, the plant's leaves would fall off and they'd start to fall apart. So those three things alone can basically harmonize your whole entire garden or backyard very quickly. And it's all simple things that can be done. You know, we can get into like, obviously, there's color therapy, there's symbols, you can do, you know, sacred geometry and things like that. You can vortex your water, you know, so that it goes through a vortex as it comes down. But those three are pretty much the simplest ones to start with. And then you can always move forward into other ones as well. But Mm -hmm. 
that's the biggest ones I would say. The other last one, I, I think I forgot is a copper water, watering can. You can do that as well too, so that the water is structuring while it's being poured out. A lot of the old copper watering cans used to have a curly spout, like a spiral, so that they would structure or spin as they came out. Now you see everything, everything's in a straight line, everything's completely, you know, just one way basically. And nature doesn't work in that. And that's what Victor Schauberger said. He said, if we work with nature, we'll always do well. If we go against nature, it will destroy us. You know, it's, it's just that simple. Yeah. You know, there's a, I don't remember the guy's name, but he's down in South America doing uh, agroforestry. I don't know if you're aware of like, you know, what they're, what they're doing now, but it's, it's the same thing of like, we are trying to create areas where either humans destroy it or humans stay out of it, you know, nature reserves or big farms where, where we conquer it. And he's like, why not create spaces for the co-inhabitants of plants, animals, and humans? Well, I don't think we plan on humans to go in extinct. Like if we're always going to be here, let's create these environments where we benefit from the food the plants provide, the plants benefit from the waste that we provide. You know, like it's just it's this regenerative agriculture, you know, type of, of concept proving abundance you know like there's not a shortage of you know this and that despite the rain or you know like those sort of things um that was kind of the next thing that i'd like to to tap into you being in arizona me being in california despite all these storms that we've had this summer water is something that's a high commodity it costs a lot it can it can you know terrorize your your farm if you're not getting enough of it how does changing the you know the magnetic frequency and you know adding uh electroculture to your farm change the way you know that you, you use water so with electroculture, when you start enhancing the, the magnetism of the soil, right, and you start boosting all of that, you actually need less water. And this was what was fascinating. When Justin Cristo Flo was talking about electroculture back in the 1920s, he had this pamphlet and he showed how electroculture, your plants will be frost resistant, they'll be heat resistant, they'll require less water, you know, they'll, they won't have as many pests, right? Because the pests only come when your soil is all messed up. They try to eat it up and clean it up. But with the water situation, they don't require as much water anymore because your soil and the root system of the plant is actually being optimized, right? If, if, the, if the roots and the soil are not optimized, you've got to keep pouring more water. And related to that, that's why we see like these floods, right? Where all of a sudden they're like, oh my gosh, it's the biggest flood. It's like, yeah, because that land has pretty much turned to a rock. And once it's completely a rock and water tries to pour on it, it just sits on top. But as we start to harmonize our land, then what starts to happen is the water will go in, but it'll also distribute. And then actually less flooding would occur and you would need to let, use less water. So, you know, these are all things that help save things. And like you said, build harmony. And that's what we should do because the other thing too that we do, which is completely mind blowing. And I was thinking about it the other day with farming is like we take a plot of land over farm it, destroy it, and then move to the next. And then be like, we don't have enough land for people. What do you mean? You just destroyed all the acres in between. How does that make any sense? So same thing with us is we need to exist. And as you build harmony with electroculture, I've seen more birds come around, more bees, more grasshoppers, more beautiful insects that are needed, right? Pollinators, butterflies, all of these things start coming, which also makes the area better, which then also send the same thing, makes it so that you don't need as much of all the other nonsense that they're trying to sell you. Mm. Man, it's it's such a, a huge like epiphany. And I was like, oh, you know, because like we're, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, you got to get a well and then you got to get a solar. So that way you can just pump all the water out that you need. And it's like, well, is there another way of doing things? You know, I love that out of the box thinking. Why don't you talk a little bit about um the effects of like when we have these pesticides and you know, like those sort of things because i think your your story revolves around like you were sick and got better as a result of getting that stuff out how does glyphosate and these chemicals from dupont and whatnot interact with maybe not even human biology but the biology of of the plants and the animals like how is this destruction happening because we always think oh the epa or you know all these government agencies shouldn't allow these poisons if they're going to affect humans how are they kind of circumventing these um these, these things that we're seeing, the autoimmune disorders, they can't, you know, these, these things are kind of undeniable, especially since the 90s when all that stuff started to be used, you know, in excess. How is that, these chemicals interacting with us in, in biology? Well, the first step with that is that the normalization of the illness, right? Mm -hmm. That's one big thing. So when you start normalizing it and it just becomes normal to say that everybody should have that, 
then people aren't seeing the opposite, right? In which we should be, where we're very healthy and we don't have to worry about any of those things. But as for the chemicals, I mean, that was our story, right? Like we, I mean, I got into healing the body. My body was sick. I was eating GMOs. I didn't know what I was eating. I thought I was trying to be healthy, but then I figured out and watched a documentary called GMOs Revealed, Mm. which was a 22 hour documentary Mm. on GMOs. It really opened my eyes to a very different side of what I didn't realize that the food is being used as a weapon. Right. And the thing is, is when you look at all these chemicals, like you just said, glyphosate, which was originally pat- patent as an antibiotic, which, you know, anti-life. So if you're spraying that on the crop and then going to consume that, it's going to do the same thing in your body. Mm-hmm. Right. Glyphosate disrupts the shikimate pathway from functioning so that the gut cannot function. The brain cannot function. Serotonin and dopamine imbalances all start to occur. So when we look at all of these things that people are trying to cover, right? They're trying to give you a little something for everything. It's all related to a big portion is related to what we're consuming, right? And the other thing too, is when you put up all these goofy cell phone towers and all these frequencies all over the place, you're also enhancing these chemicals to break down through the blood brain barrier and get into the body, Mm -hmm. right? So you have these two things happening. You have all of these chemicals over here, and then you have frequencies as well over here, both of those are bombarding the cells so that the cell cannot recover. And then it starts to have all of these illnesses. And the easiest way with the Monsanto DDT and all of their stuff. And I mean, if we look at the track record of the people who are producing food, right? These people were part of Agent Orange, you know, the the Vietnam War, like all of these things, they weren't doing good things. They weren't helping anybody. They were melting people with chemicals and then trying to say, now let's put it on the food supply and then sell it back. On top of that, they're trying to pattern nature, right? They want to control nature. They want to own plants and they want to own life. And that's a whole nother thing too. But what, what I realized was, was when I started, you know, bringing in different superfoods and started going organic and cleaning up my diet and really understanding the source of where I'm eating everything from, right? Asking questions, you know, knowing about anything, if there's pesticide sprays, all these things, all of a sudden my health went back like that. And I'm a whole different person from what I was when I, let's say was 30 versus what I, you know, being today, 37, night and day difference. Right. And at 30, I was pretty much just falling apart and I couldn't Mm -hmm. understand it because I was eating healthy. I thought I was eating healthy, but I was eating a lot of pesticides, you know, canola, uh, things were cooked in canola oil, a lot of different restaurants where they cook in soybean oil or corn oil. All these things were going into my body. And when I eliminated all of that, and we started cooking from scratch and being aware of everything going into the body, everything fixed itself. And I thought, oh my gosh, you know, I went to all these professionals and they keep telling me I'm, you know, they stick you with something and they're like, you're allergic to this and whatever it's like, but you're never talking about nutrition. Mm -hmm. And when I started seeing that the actual system of when a person goes to become a professional, they only go usually through about five hours of nutrition right in 10 years so then how are they ever going to see that it's a nutritional deficiency or root cause they don't ever see that so when i started understanding that i thought oh my gosh you know this makes perfect sense like i am what i eat right and i am what i drink and these things started to change and as i changed all that i realized wow this is miraculous you know like and this is the power that every person can do and the, the, the greatest documentary of all showing this is the documentary Fat, Sick, and Nearly Half Dead. Mm-hmm. The guy literally fixes every ailment, every problem he had by juicing. That was it. He didn't do anything different, nothing special. He just drank juice, you know? So it just goes to show that we have a lot more power in, our, in the ability to regenerate than we've been told, right? Because we're, we, 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 get, we get all these fancy words and fancy names and all these things you've never heard of. And then you get confused and nervous and scared. And that fear tactic works against your ability to start thinking logically because you're so in fear that the professional has told you, you only got a couple of years. So now guess what? In your mind, mind, you only do have a couple of years and you will start to break down your own body. So I realize there's different things that relate to your health. And this is a little tangent on it, but different things that relate to your health, whether it's the fear frequency, whether it's, you know, you have radiation over here or food as well too, over here. There's so many things that are all frequency related that could be impacting your health without you even knowing it. 
You know, it's, it's interesting. So I told you I'm, I'm a chiropractor, the very first chiropractor, the inventor, you know, or whatever, I'm sure people were doing chiropractic well before it became a, a thing. He was a magnetic healer. He was in tune to these. Freak- uh huh. Yeah. It's a lodestone. If you can see it. Uh-uh. Sure. Okay. So that's the lodestone. It's the, it's, it's a magnetic rock that comes out of Utah. So that's wow. funny to say that. He's a magnetic healer. He was in tune with these frequencies and biorhythms and, you know, fed up with people, you know, even back then going to the medical system and just getting bloodletting, you know, all these sort of things. Oh my gosh, there's this book called um, Crooked and he's talking about their use of mercury and you use it till they're foaming at the mouth and then they're, they're cured and they're better and all these other neurotoxins. And it's like, I mean, it's, it's so backwards, but anyways, he was in tune with this. And so when he put his hands on a person and he's like, there is these similar frequencies or this one's off or, you know, let's provide energy into the system. Let's repair the antenna. When the antenna is repaired, the body's going to be able to absorb, like you said, these energies, the conductance and the body's going to heal itself. But if we're constantly exposing ourselves to, uh, you know, even like the, the wireless headphones and cell phones and this and that, the other thing, we're corrupting this antenna, changing the way that our body conducts energy changing the way we absorb food. And then we start to become allergic because our bodies are, can no longer adapt to what we're putting into our bodies because it's become so toxic. It's become so inflammatory, you know, and, and we, we wonder why we have so much war and hate and whatnot in the world. That's all our bodies, neurology and biology are saying is, you know, fight, inflame, allergic, you know, all of that stuff. I'm so thankful for, for people like you that are, that are, you know, bringing awareness to, you know, to the world and, and, you know, in any way, shape or form, you know, however many people this podcast reaches and probably the hundreds of others, you know, that you've done and you've decided to do something with it um, through your website as well. Um, there's a couple supplements and whatnot that I'm curious about the dragon's blood. I think that's, you know, that's, you have one on there is what I'm most curious about. Why don't you kind of go through what cultivate elevate is about the different supplements. And if people are interested in just like, Hey, I want to start with just one or two things. What are your top ones that you recommend they start on? So if you were to look at our website, it's cultivateelevate.com, and we have a plethora of information from everything from supplements to just ways to fig- to heal your terrain, you know, to just paying attention to the little fine details, just like you said, right? Because that's that's the thing that we start under underlooking. We, we don't pay attention to the little fine details of what could be impacting our health. But we have a, a whole bunch of different ancient superfoods, and my goal is to basically bring different types of ancient superfoods which were used for thousands and thousands of years into the public because a lot of these things did wonders for healing. So if we go into dragon's blood, dragon's blood is the ancient tree sap from the Draco tree. It's basically a tree that when it's cut, it's actually in California too as well. But when it's cut, it would actually bleed red and it would look like blood. And it's a really great blood tonic. It's great at healing the body. It's great at healing wounds. It's great if people are having gum issues they can put it on their gums and it can start to help regenerate their gums. Um, you know, if someone has, for example, skin conditions, they can put dragon's blood on the skin. They can also consume it, put it in your smoothie. But what was super fascinating about this was the auric value of dragon's blood is over 3 million, right? So the average auric value for like blueberries is about, I think it's about 10, 15,000. Chaga mushroom, you get up to about 50,000. I believe it's turmeric, you hit 300,000. Dragon's blood is 3 million. So it's on a whole different spectrum. Mm -hmm. And you'll be able, when you taste it and you feel it, you'll be able to understand why it's on a different spectrum. It's it's, like you just said, the energetic principles of certain foods can heighten our energy as well. So dragon's blood works really well for all of those things. We have it in powder and we have it in capsules. A lot of people like to just pop the capsules because it's, you know, it's easy. Um, that's one of our, our, our ones people can start with. The other one is pearl powder, which is absolutely phenomenal. The pearl looks exactly like an eyeball. Mm-hmm. So you know, when it comes to healing the eyes, I put up some studies about and some information about pearls and cataracts and how they can help as maybe a potential solution for eye health. And we just had a, a lady who just wrote a review about how her husband was legally blind and he just started seeing color again, like little amounts of colors with pearl. So pearl is really great on the eyes, on the bones and the teeth, right? Mm-hmm. All the, 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 the structure, right? The structure of the body. And it's loaded with uh, magnesium, calcium, and selenium, and a lot of different amino acids. Mm-hmm. And it just helps with repairing different things because 
what I realize is, is, you know, we're missing nutrients because of all of these sprays, all of these chemicals, they're ripping everything out of the soil and we're not getting the nutrients anymore. So certain systems of the body are beginning to break down, right? And when we don't get those minerals anymore, that area falls apart. So same thing with the eyes. If the eyes are not fed, they begin to degenerate, you know, and plus wearing glasses all the time, those also basically make it so that the eyes cannot regenerate or heal because they block the UV spectrum. And that's all another topic. But mm -hmm. in general, you know, that's the biggest thing is the nutrient deficiency. So the last one I would say is another great starter is our Shilajot tablets. They're nice and simple. You can pop them in your coffee or you can pop them and go. But Shilajot is very high in minerals, 84 of 102. So when we're needing minerals to put back into the body, Shilajot is pretty much nature's multivitamin when it comes to that. It's also loaded with fulvic acid, which is great as, as pulling things out and humic acid as pulling things out, which are things that are also in our soil, right? They're, those are the same things that help do everything in the soil. But Shilajot helps with energy. It helps if a person has chronic fatigue syndrome. It helps if they have maybe brain fog, if their digestion's not going. Because when we trace it back to everything we were talking about in the middle of this, we look at how our digestion is being pretty much shut off, right? A lot of people are having digestion issues. Yeah. And when they're, they're, when their gut lining is not working anymore, their brain stops working, right? Because they're both connected. And I'm sure you know, too, with doing things with chiropractic, it's the same thing. If things are out of a line, those systems now turn off. So Shilajat, Dragon's Blood, and Pearl can help get those systems flowing again, and also just heal very quickly. The coolest study I ever saw was like a person had a wound with dragon's blood, they placed it on there. And within like three days, it was completely healed. And according to the study, while the other two that were in the study, it was like 14 days and 16 days or whatever. Wow. So the fact that it can heal that fast and go into the system is just, it's how nature's supposed to be. And the reason I'm so big on bringing food, like actual food, nature's food mm -hmm. to the public and, and bringing it out there is because when I was in the fitness world and I understood synthetic vitamins and all of these things, I used, I used to look at things like you need something individual, you know, you need this individual vitamin C, you need this individual vitamin D, you need this individual vitamin E, whatever, but the body doesn't work like that. Mm -mm. You know, it's like, it's, it's like eating an apple versus eating just the seeds. You're only going to get a portion of something and you're not getting the full spectrum. And when you start to bring in these foods, right? You start to get everything that is needed so that the whole system can work because that's what we are. We can't just target one thing. And, you know, as you bring in food, it's very easy for the body to absorb. And that's the other thing. If you're having digestion issues, it could be related also to maybe supplements that you may be taking that are filled with a lot of citric acid, maltodextrin, artificial flavors, sucralose, you know, all those things that are been snuck in there because they're synthetic instead of going something from the food source so that you can start to heal all the different pathways of the body. I love that. And, you know, we're, we're all about that too. You know, I, I that's one thing that I talk to my, my patients about, it's like, Oh, what supplements are best? And it's like, well, I mean, the goal is to get it from our food, recognizing that you can't really get it all from our food, you know, anymore, but don't just go get vitamin C, you know? And, and in fact, when I was doing my undergrad, uh, I, I studied exercise science and I had to do like a research project on a certain you know aspect or whatever. And so a big thing then was those uh, emergency packets, you know, first came out. And so I was doing research on, you know, like, are these working or whatever? I concluded that you are benefiting more from the increased water intake than you are actually yes. from putting that junk, you know, in your body. It's like you're drinking an extra cup of water. That's probably doing more for you than that stuff that's in that packet, you know? Um so I, yeah. I love that it's it's full spectrum, you know, it's, it's something that your body and what I also love about it is like, if you give yourself 10,000, you know, whatever is a, a vitamin C, and it doesn't need that you're just going to pee it out. That's why they say, you got know, Americans probably with the most expensive pee in the world versus when you have this full spectrum, it, usually these things can get turned into something else. If your body needs more of this, or more of that, there's these cofactors that help create it into something that your body actually can use rather than just being like, well, I don't need more of this specific thing. Let's just get rid of it. You know? Um, well, Matt, thank you so much for uh, coming on, um, you know, the podcast. This has been a super <laughs> packed, <laughs> we hit so many different topics in such a short amount of time. It's insane. Um, thank you for the work that you're doing. Um, I look forward to networking and working with you, um, you know, in the future, maybe we can bring you out to do a, a live conference out here in Southern California. I think that'd be super awesome. Um, 
any last words or, or things for, for people as they uh, finish listening to this podcast? So other than that, just you can find us on CultivateElevate.com, on YouTube, on Telegram, on Rumble. And then we also have a lot of information on a blog called Electric Culture for Beginners. A lot of people can look all that up as well, too. But yeah, just trying to put out the information and help provide solutions. Because, you know, when I was in a fear state, that's the best way to describe it. You know, I couldn't find solutions because I was too in the fear state. And I feel like once we get out of that state, you know, we can then use logic. And they want us, like you just said, they want us in a fear state because then we're being controlled. But there are solutions to everything. And whatever a person's going through, you know, any health ailment, any anything, there is always a counter to all of those things. And we have to be aware of that no matter what we're told, because nobody should have to live their life, you know, going through some health ailment that they don't want to have to even have just because of something so simple, like like what you said, even with those those emergency packets, Mm -hmm. they might be getting allergic reactions from those and then trying to fix their issue. And then now all of a sudden they're two steps back and nobody should have to go through anything like that. So that's kind of how I see it. But my goal is to try to put as much information to help provide solutions so that we don't have to live like that because we can't move forward. Mm -hmm. We can't move forward if we're continuously doing everything we did in the past. Yep. Well, thanks once again, man. This is an amazing podcast. Um, We'll talk to you soon. Thank you for listening to the Healthy Perspective Podcast. To connect with Dr. Bowman, follow him on Instagram at Dr. Chris Bowman. Until next time, make shift happen.